Hi, welcome to Keep Trainers on the Road. I'm Lily Bateman, we have Dr. Mark Humbert with us. And today we're going to talk about strength and conditioning in the Masters Athletes. We're continuing this theme of Masters Athletes. So, Mark, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so, really important principle. Obviously, in our videos, we talk about strength all the time. Um, but we're going to dive a little bit more into, into the strength and conditioning side of things and why those are all important. Um, and so, you know, we know that time is limited, right? We all have busy lives. And especially if you're on kind of a, a, a pretty good regimented training schedule, um, fitting in those workouts can be hard. And we'll talk a little bit later about maybe some ways to, to, to modify that. Um, but those workouts, we want to see them have some different phases, right? So we're just getting in all the things that our body needs within that kind of overall resistance training umbrella. So the first thing that we want to start out with is, is movement preparation, right? We want to get our bodies warm, warmed up, maybe do some flexibility work. Um, we can even do some, some mobility drills. Do you want to talk about some of the mobility drills that are, that are good to do as a warm-up? Yeah, I'm really big on dynamic warm-ups. So what I usually do is I always start with some jumping jacks, some high knees. Um, it's not hard to demonstrate on this mountain. <laughs> oh, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> um, so just to like kind of get things moving. I'm a really big fan of kicks too. So just standing and kicking. So I like that better than bending down and touching your toes, kind of a static stretch. So just things where you're getting your heart rate up, you're sweating a little bit, you're moving a little bit, getting your body moving in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good for multiple reasons, right? Warming the body up, getting the joints moving, uh, getting the muscles flexible, but also uh, starting to get some of those energy systems on, online, um, right? We want, we want to have those online to sustain a good workout. The next phase is getting in that high load, lower rep strength training, right? We've already talked about in so many of our videos the beneficial effects that has on, in terms of muscle strength, um, muscle size, muscle growth, um, as well as bone and tendon health and quality. So we really want to get that high load strength training in, make sure we get those solid workouts, right? We're getting the, the, the really core exercise, we're getting a, a push, a pull, um, a hinge, a squat, uh, some rotational things, right? And and making sure that we're, we're building some um, you know, core abs, but also core hips, right? That, that, that solid base from which to reduce the power. So getting those. So, and when you're talking heavy resistance, what would your advice be for how heavy and how many reps and how many Yeah, so, <laughs> oh, you move. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I'll start that off with a caveat. Before going straight into, like, high-load strength training, we want to make sure that the movement quality is down. And so on those on those lifts, right, like we talked about the, the, the squat, the hinge, etc., like I just mentioned, making sure that those are really good quality movements. You can handle a lighter weight and perform those with really good form and fluidly. Um, once you have that down, then we can talk about getting into higher load. And when I say higher load, um, that's typically... It ranges from 70 to 80% of one rep max, but but I would even go more towards 80% of one rep max. And then, um, you know, four to five reps working to that. But even if we're starting with, you know, kind of in that eight to eight to 10 reps, um, and then we put more load on and fewer reps. In terms of the qualities of strength in the muscle, um, we know that that produces those really good results. And again, especially in, in terms of bone um, and tendon strength, we, we really want that heavier load. Um, bone gets bored pretty quickly, so you don't need to do that many rep reps to have um, have that stimulus and, and, the, and the bone adaptations. I like that. Yeah, that's kind of my general rule of thumb is if you can do three sets of 10, then it's time to increase your weight. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great rule of thumb. So we've got that in. Um, next, we want to move into some plyometric drills. Uh, Melody, talk, yeah, why don't you go ahead and talk about ply plyometrics? I know you talked about that in the previous video, but, but let's re up on that. I think you have some really good things to say. Yeah, so plyometric drills are basically, I like to think of them as bouncy drills. So they're bouncy drills, they're agility drills. So some examples would be box jumps or maybe ladder drills. Um, what are some other plyometric drills? Yeah, so I would say one of the things I really like that they talked about in this, in this video series yeah. that you're watching is regressing the challenge, right? So we start with kind of some low intensity drills and double leg, right? So we're doing some lower, uh, yeah. you know, maybe some, some zigzags, um, uh, maybe some ankling. We're doing like lower box jumps, you know, maybe from like a four to six inch step. Um, 
and then we move up from there, right? And moving into, you know, maybe higher things or like a, like a jump down and then a jump back up. Um, so there we're getting some of the eccentric and concentric qualities. Um, and then, uh, you know, things like bounding in the higher intensity, um, things that are really focusing on single leg, uh, single leg activities. I feel like these are your like athlete drills. When you think athlete, you think the agility drills. And yeah, I feel like yeah. as runners, I feel like we really neglect this part. We're, we still are athletes. I feel like we still should be doing the agility drills that we see the soccer players and football players doing. Um, yeah. 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 It's just as it's just as important for us as it is, for them, right. right? Well, and one thing that I like, right? Like we want to have like the the endurance of a, <laughs> of of a runner, right? Yeah. Um, but we want to have the bones and tendons of, of a basketball player, right? Someone yeah. that's experienced that like high uh, high loading rate, high impact. Um, so yeah, lo- love all of that. Um, and yeah. sorry, I just want to add one more thing. So um, I spent a whole year running and not, I didn't really think about the agility. I just yeah, yeah. was running and lifting weights. And I have felt a difference in my body when it, like I haven't been doing multi-directional kind of things. Everything I've been doing is forward, right? And I can feel that difference in my body. I do kind of feel like like my bounce isn't quite there like it used to be. Step. My coordination isn't quite there like it used to be. So taking time to do those things to make sure that your bounce and your coordination stays, I think is super important. So. Definitely. No, crucial point there for sure. Yeah. Um, and I like what you said, challenging the multi-directional uh, angle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, and that really leads us into the next point is is tissue specific conditioning, right? So, so picking some of those areas where we really want to focus in on the exercise. And so again, right, we're usually moving in this plane. And so not neglecting some of the, the muscles that move us in other planes, right? The rotational plane and kind of the side to side plane, um, right? Especially in around the hips, making sure that we can maintain a solid and, and, and stable pelvis uh, while we're running. So things like that. Um, and then if there's any area that's kind of prone to, to injury, right? Shoring up that um, in terms of specific um, strengthening drills. Um, and then also I would say, let's put some focus on, on the calf complex, right? So on the gastrocnemius yes. and as well as on the soleus, right? Especially for master's athletes. Yes. Yeah. So super, super important. Um, we've talked about in previous videos as we age, uh, uh, soft tissue injuries become more prevalent. And so really focusing on, on some of those areas that are more injury prone. Um, again, that, that kind of Achilles calf complex, um, making sure that, that, that is prepared to handle the loads of running. So we definitely want to make sure that we get those group drills in. So getting that all fit into a single workout can be can be difficult, right? For for the busy the busy runner. So periodization. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, exactly, exactly. So um, yeah, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So yeah. instead of trying to fit everything into one workout, or you're trying to fit everything into your week, it it gets really overwhelming, especially for us normal people who have jobs and lives, right? Um, so periodization is breaking this stuff up in blocks of time. So one example would be maybe for a couple months, I'm going to work on plyometrics. For a couple months, I'm going to work on my form. For a couple months, I'm going to work on heavy training. And honestly, I think the best way to do periodization is to listen to your body. Maybe think, what have I done for a while? I feel like, okay, I've done heavy lifting for a while. I'm feeling good. Oh, but I haven't been doing a lot of agility. So maybe I'm going to focus on that to kind of make that my priority for a while. And then once you kind of feel good with that, oh, I haven't been lifting heavy for a little bit. Maybe I should focus on that for a few months. Just kind of listen to your body and be aware of everything that you want to incorporate and just think, what do I need to focus on right now? Definitely, because we need to train all those different qualities and and being able to split it up, right? Our bodies need all of those things. Um, but, you know, if we just keep throwing the same thing at our body day after day after day with no variation, um, they tend to kind of plateau, right? We're not making those same adaptations at the same rate that we are when we kind of switch things up and we um, pull a fast one on our bodies, right? <laughs> and so, so that's definitely a great way to split things up um, and keep us healthy throughout a training season. You just kind of have to you know, build that around your on season, your off season, kind of the, the races and, and, and things that you're going to be involved in. Mm-hmm. Um, another way to, to incorporate that within the week is like Melody talked about before, right? As a warm up, in, incorporating some of those mobility drills, doing some plyometric as as part of that, right? The the plyometric loading isn't you know typically as much as you're going to have when you're just running, and so we can do especially those low intensity ones 
um, mm-hmm. is, a, is a great way to warm up. So, yeah. And also doing a little bit of this every day, even five or 10 minutes of it, just a little bit, bit of it can go a long way. So maybe trying to fit in five or 10 minutes of some plyometric drills or some strength training after every run will, can make a big, big difference. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, one other little tidbit that we thought we'd throw in is um, strength training actually has a really positive benefit in terms of running economy. Um, so uh, studies found about a 6% gain in running economy with, uh, with regular resistance training. And so that's just another benefit to throw that into your schedule. A lot of people think like, oh, if I start strength training, that's going to slow me down. I'm going to bulk up. Um, but actually, it's going gonna, it's gonna to benefit you in, in terms of uh, absolute running economy. And also, to speak another point to that is what happens when we're, uh, like, we're doing aerobic training as well as strength training depending on how we train, there is some of somewhat of, uh, of an interference effect. And so typically like you're not getting, uh, the same muscle growth, right? That hypertrophy of muscle, um, when you're throwing regular runs and especially depending on how you time that. So if that's like one of your worries, like I'm going to bulk up if I, I train typically that that's not, that's not as much of an issue. Up, yeah. is great, right? <laughs> and, and, and you have to train a specific way to really focus in towards, uh, towards muscle growth. And, and it, it has a lot to do with your nutrition as well. And so, uh, definitely don't let that be a reason that you neglect weight training, you know, that you think that's going to yeah, make you too bulky or it's going to actually hurt your endurance, uh, performance. It's actually going to benefit it. So don't neglect that. Please keep that in there. It's super, super crucial, crucial, right? There's all these different components going on in there. We need the, the race specific training. We need the long runs, right? We need to build up those energy systems, but we also need to, to build up our body's ability to handle absolute load, right? Um, we need to do resistance training and we need to recover. We need to recover well and we need to recover yes. hard and we need to recover regularly, right? Mm-hmm. When we make time for all of those different components, um, we perform at a lot higher level and we can stay healthy um, a lot better and reduce our injury risk. But again, don't get overwhelmed. Just listen <laughs> to your body. Do what you know you need to know. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, anything else? Uh, No, I think that's everything for today. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, follow, subscribe, all that stuff. Share this with somebody who you feel like needs to hear it today, and we will catch you on the next one.